My name is Eva Rubin. I'm a senior on the women's basketball team here. And these are two of our lovely team managers. And uh, we all have type 1 diabetes. We're just going to have like a little talk, a little session about type 1 diabetes and what it is that we kind of deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I've been a type 1 diabetic for 10 years now. How about you guys? 16 years. Wow. Okay. wow. I mean, I was four, so my mom did a lot of the work for me until I would say I was about eight and that's when I joined JDRF okay. and um, I took my diabetes a lot into my own hands because you know you're at the age where like I got it mom I can do it myself mm -hmm. it actually made me a lot more responsible than I would say like the average kid my age because you're managing your life in your hands every yeah. day yeah. so that kind of forced me to grow up but at that same token being more responsible I had more freedom and you know was able to do things without you know my mom's or my parents concern right 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 so I was diagnosed, like I said earlier, at 13. Um, I was diagnosed, I want to say, the day before my first ever like school basketball tryout. I lost like 20 pounds in two weeks. And this was back when I didn't have 20 pounds to lose. Like it was, <laughs> I looked like sickly. It was really bad. Um, so I'm like skinny, thirsty, all the typical diabetes signs, going to the bathroom like every 30 minutes, end up in the hospital missing basketball tryouts. I'm like, can I even play basketball? Like, can I eat these foods that I like eating? So it's kind of just a whirlwind. And then the next week when I get back out of the hospital, I just kind of show up at basketball practice and I'm just like literally thrown into the fire of managing diabetes and doing like athletics, playing sports. So I'm like kind of managing this disease for like 12 hours, 14 hours a day, like on my own. So that kind of made me kind of grow up a little bit and take charge and kind of stay organized. That was kind of my story. Like here is this disease go play basketball and figure it out. So I've, you know, done a, a decent job at that because I'm still able to play, but it was it was tough for sure at 13. I've only been a type one for about a year and a half, so. New to the club. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm new, I'm new. Yeah. It was April 30th, 2020. I probably remember it yeah. a little more clearly than Nick, and it was during the pandemic, so we'd already been quarantined yeah. for about 40 days or so, right? And I just thought that this was normal because, like, everyone's going through this, like, COVID depression. Yeah. I just started having a lot of trouble sleeping because I kept getting up to go pee. Oh, okay. Um, and that's kind of what ticked me off. So one night I got, like, no sleep, and I was just like, I probably have, like, a bladder infection or something. Oh, okay. So I'm like, I told my dad, like, we should probably go to a doctor, get it checked out. You know, they did the test and then they did my blood sugar and I was at like 300 and they were like, oh, that's not normal. Okay. Um, and you, you have type 1 diabetes. And I was like, oh, well, obviously not expecting cool. it as a 20 year old. Yeah. One of the stereotypes type 1 is that you get it when you're young. Yeah. And I get I've read online there are cases where you get it at 20, 30, 40. Yeah. But I just didn't know that that was the case. It's not so happen to me. right. Right. <laughs> Honestly, as much as the pandemic sucked, as ob obviously it yeah. did. I think the pandemic, in a way, was a blessing just to help me kind of learn. And the day I was diagnosed, I would have still been at school without, a pa without the pandemic. So you, you never know oh, what yeah. could have happened. I don't want to say the pandemic saved my life, but you never know yeah. what could have happened because I'm a guy who never wants to get medical help. <laughs> so if I was still at school, I would have been like, oh, I can wait 10 days until oh, finals. Yeah. So on. that could have been real bad. Yeah. Um, I guess it worked out in the best way the best it could way have, did. but yeah. 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 Stereotypes slash misconceptions. What comes to mind when you guys hear that? I mean, kinda, I, I've known type one diabetics my whole life and there's always been like the thing where it's like they, there's stuff that they can't do or that they have tr more trouble doing, whether it's athletics or just basic hobbies. Yeah. But you know, I, it's definitely not true. And you yeah. know, you can do anything. It's just, there's there's more work to it than maybe other than a normal person, but you yeah. know, it's, it's everything you want to do in life is doable. Yeah. What about you, Nick? Uh, I definitely agree with that, Zach. I would say the biggest stereotype I run into one of the two is they always say, well, you're not fat. <laughs> and I just, I just always have to laugh yeah. to myself because a lot of people think that if you have diabetes is because you consume too much sugar, eat too much sugar, right. just have a bad diet. And that's not the case with type one diabetes. So, I mean, outside of that, that's probably the yeah. biggest one. I think that that's something that that I come across a lot is, oh, well, do you take care of yourself? Or, oh, you take such good care of yourself. Like, how is that possible? Oh, we are an athlete. Like, that doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, well, it has, like, oddly enough that you mentioned that it has zero to do with, like, being an athlete or what kind of shape you're in. Like, type 1 diabetes can literally 
happen to anyone. Can we talk about even if you do like everything right? Man. Oh, yeah. Like on those days where like I over bolus and my blood sugar is still high no matter yes. what I do. You think your carb counting is perfect, or you have something where it's so easy and you're still like super high and yeah. you just like, you're like, how did you mess this up? You yeah. did everything right. Or but... even if you did it yesterday, I did, I ate the exact same thing yesterday yeah. at, at the exact same time <laughs> yeah. with the exact same amount of insulin. How am I still high? Yeah. That, that's the frustrating part about diabetes is like your routines that like work well for you they will still fail you sometimes mm -hmm. and you can't you just got to go with it it's a lot of trial and error but there's always yeah. seems to be more error than <laughs> <laughs> yeah diabetes is a art and not a science for yeah, sure that's a good way to put it. that is definitely a good way to yeah put it. i think that the biggest thing for me especially as an athlete and just someone with a, a busy schedule in general is the waking up constantly like in the middle of the night to deal with a high or low blood sugar i think that that's a big thing that people don't think about most of our practices are in the morning so like sleep is already like limited in general but like it's frustrating when we have practice at 7 or 7 15 and i was just up at like 5 45 dealing with a low blood sugar and i gotta go back to sleep and try to get one more hour before practice starts there are far worse ways that diseases can manifest themselves and kind of interrupt your day-to-day -day life but it is frustrating to just deal with stuff like that yeah, I definitely agree. Um, to your point, I like to call it an invisible disability yeah. um, that people kind of don't see what goes into your day-to-day -day life. So if I'm feeling or if I'm high all day and I'm just feeling yucky, then it reflects. But, you know, you kind of have to mask that because you're around, you know, your peers or other people, professional settings that you have to, you know, put on that front for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to go off of kind of I guess what both of you guys were saying, where I feel like there's just so many tiny decisions you have to make yes. every day that you don't, that maybe more most people don't think go a long way, but like, you know, we're, we're active, like if we're going to a practice, we're like, all right, how much insulin am I going to have to yeah. give me, like, so I don't go low at practice, or even just during the day, like if I'm going out, I know I'm not going to be home for a few hours, like, should I eat a snack, yeah. should I... Should I wait it out? Should There's just all these micro decisions that maybe even if you're following us day to day, like you won't see, yeah. but they're there and we're thinking about it most of the day. Like yeah. what's going to be best? How are we going to feel the best throughout the day and stuff like that? Come here. Sit up. Sit. Sit. Hi, baby. Drop the butt. Hi. Drop the butt. Thank you. Ray is being a little spicy right now because she is being my blood spicy. sugar is crashing and she knows that but this is ray yeah, like, um oh. ray! <laughs> Hello, sweet. yes i know i know i'm low i know yes thank you see ray is telling me that my blood sugar is low this is ray this is nick's diabetic alert dog and um nick probably can better explain kind of her like abilities and how she can help a person living with type 1 diabetes but um yeah you can go ahead and come give on. a little intro on ray come sit <laughs> So I actually found out about um, Diabetic Alert Dogs through a foundation through the Chicago Cubs. Um, uh, do you watch baseball? I uh, do you watch baseball, right? Yeah, big Cubs fan. Big so, Cubs okay, right. So, you know, Ron Santo, mm -hmm. he had type yeah, 1 diabetes right. and his wife, he, she started a foundation for um, service dogs for people with uh, type 1 diabetes. So that's actually where I got right from. And I found out that they actually take search and rescue dogs that like didn't make it to FEMA or like didn't make it through the process and they train them to be service dogs for oh. people, right? Huh. So hmm. she was actually a search and rescue <laughs> dog and um, oh she didn't she didn't make it through the process. Yes. So they trained her to be my um, diabetic alert dog. And she actually said they trained them basically like how they would train a drug dog almost. But instead of right. with drugs, they train them with low mm -hmm. blood sugar samples oh. and high blood sugar samples. It's not just me she can pick up on. It's any human any human i would say within a mile radius actually because oh their nose God. are that strong what? so like when she's on that's me she crazy. smells me that's why i feel like she's going a little little berserk right now because yeah. she's picking it up from i think me and you because i put on like eight units and now i'm like super Not eight. <laughs> yeah. that's a lot. so um so that's what she does just... she she nudges people but then if you ignore her like i'm kind of doing now she'll whine and like put on a big fuss and then if i completely ignore her and i would say if i'm like really crashing like you know when Dexcom says like double down, yeah, like yeah, that, double. yeah, like yeah. that type of crashing, she'll really bark at me. Oh, so wow. I, I love it for the reasons that like she can really save my life. It's not only just saving your life; they're also a companion. Right. Yeah. So you know, a dog is almost Dogs like a man's best. like best man. Yeah, a man's best friend. So. Oh, so, yeah. oh okay. Hi, baby. Yes, baby. Yes, I know. 
Okay. She loves the attention. Yes, she yes, loves it. Know, yeah. Okay, okay, no, no. Know, get down. Okay. Get down. Okay. Get down. You're okay. Down. Thank <laughs> you. So we kind of have like a unique situation here with like myself as a player being a type 1 diabetic and having two managers around that are also type 1 diabetics. How do you think that's like kind of enhanced our super fun diabetes experience? <laughs> I remember the first practice of last season I came in, I was like telling our Akina, our GA, and some of the coaches, like, by the way, I just got diagnosed with diabetes in case you see me, you know, eating on the sideline. And they're all like, oh, that's perfectly fine. And you all, you know that Eva's got mm -hmm. type 1 too. And I, I think I knew that a little bit, but I kind of had forgotten. And I was like, oh, that's right. Uh -huh. And just like, I remember we were talking like after the first practice and you were telling me like, oh, you're, you're new, giving me tips and like yeah. apps and stuff. And I mean, Nick and I have talked about it too. So it's just, it's always good to like have people in similar situations to you. And because mm -hmm. we work, we're, we're working together where yeah. we see each other so often. It's just nice to talk about it and have someone you can relate to. There was a, a practice a few weeks ago. Actually, my blood sugar was like, I think I was like 30. Like it was really, really low. Like during <laughs> practice, I was like, oh yeah, finally. I just gotta go get some gels out of the office. And Nick like went with me to go get some glucose gels out of Autumn's office. Any manager like could, I could be like, hey, can you come with me and make sure I don't pass out? But mm -hmm. like to have someone there that like kind of really knows like what it feels like to be 30 and like making sure that I'm good while I'm waiting for my blood sugar to come up is just, it's cool to have that. Playing in Division One sports kind of like a high duress environment. Mm -hmm. So like just having people around that kind of know what you're dealing with is really cool. Yeah, building off of what you guys said, definitely just having somebody that um, understands the disease and just like the tiny annoyances from like pricking your finger to like actually changing your injection site. But mm -hmm. I would say like my biggest takeaway is like what you said, like, Yesterday, yesterday, I was having a really bad low, and Eva, you walked with me to make sure I had the gel, and oh, then, yeah. Zach, you came in, like, five minutes later, and you're like, hey, I'm just checking on you, are you okay? And, like, that type of support, like, yeah. and just knowing somebody understands, it's just, it makes you feel really good. Somebody besides Ray, yeah, yeah. But, you know, somebody besides you, baby. <laughs> I think I just want people who kind of see this conversation to take away, um, if they take away anything, I want it to be that we can we can do anything, right? Like we type one diabetics, we can like do everything that everyone else is doing. We can eat everything that everyone else is eating. Like we can do all the same things. It just kind of takes, like you said earlier, a little bit more work and a little more diligence on your part, but like you can do it. And it's an added bonus if you have a support system that understands diabetes or people around you that actually have diabetes too. Anything is possible. So even if you're in a place where your A1C isn't, you know, where it should be. You have time to turn it around. It's not the end of the road. You can definitely, it's never too late to make the right decisions. My A1C actually got to a point where uh, when I turned 16 and wanted to get my driver's license, it was so bad that my doctor actually couldn't even sign off on the paperwork mm -hmm. to give to the DMV to have my license. So that was kind of like my reality check, like, okay, like, yes, I can do everything, but yes, I still have to like, I still have to take care of myself. Like that is always gonna come first and I can't really enjoy anything else in life or do all these things that I want to do if I don't put diabetes first. With that being said of like, yes, you can do anything that you want to do, but to do those things, you're, you just have to honor your diabetes and let it come first and take care of that before you can do all those other things. You guys said kind of what I wanted to say so well. I guess I'll add in uh, to answer the last question. Um, like, just there's so many good like support outlets. Like if you are newly diagnosed, like people to talk to, I'm, I mean, odds are you may no other type 1 diabetics too. Um, there's also online communities yeah. and um, organizations like JDRF that you can reach out to and I think that it's it's good that as negatively as this may sound it's good that there's other people with yep. this disease yes. that can help you and can aid you if you have questions or troubles and it's good that there is a wide support group for type 1s. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I know. I, yeah, I just. She is like, swallowed like, badly because my blood like, sugar is low. Geez, I've this never actually so seen anything like this. Sit okay, down. Buddy. It's okay. like wow. Like <laughs> she's like leaping out of me to get to you. Like sit down. She loves me. <laughs> I love you, but love this you. is this is a little embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> like like not embarrassing. We we, we, we just have a separate video. Yeah, we like.